I'm a breeder from Wisconsin. I say breeder because I'm a breeder first, a dairy second, and a farmer third. As, so words are important. In the slide that you indicated, farmers, the farmers knowledge of the system. I feel that this group is breeders and you should address them as, as such. Um, I think this system really does recognize what it's looking for. I think it does an excellent job. I think that is really great for the commercial dairyman right now. But our purpose is to preserve a breed. We have a high, high user percentage are in, in commercial dairies because we're the best genetics there. If we pursue a single purpose formula, we are going to recognize only one set of genes. There's one set of perfect genes that will have the most genetic merit in this formula. When we achieve that, and we will achieve that faster and faster because of this technology, we will have bred ourselves in a corner. And that will not bode well for our Holstein breed. We must promote different breeding goals so that we don't have the, the paradox of breeding for health traits while we're inbreeding and then decreasing the fertility of our breed and uh, vitality of the breed. And so we'll just be picking the best of a bad lot in the end. And then the only solution, and USDA will bring this out, will be crossbreeding. And then we will be um, have a smaller market share. So I, I just want to hear your comments on this, this, this analysis. Yeah, I, I think that you've uh, made a lot of good points. And, uh, I think I could be here all day talking about all the different issues that come about through genomics. But uh, you've, you've hit on one that's uh, quite important. For, for me, for, to, to come to this group and talk about this topic today, uh, the main focus was to talk about the April evaluations and, and what happened in April and to try to regain people's confidence in the, in the genomic predictions. So that's, that's why I kind of narrowed it maybe didn't touch on your, your concerns as much as uh, uh, should be. But you, you're right, um, you know, the genomics, uh, we're learning as we go. Um, I think initially we may have thought that uh, both genomic test animals and a lot of outliers would be popping up and we'd find them and, and we'd be using them uh, and we'd be excited about them. Well, that really hasn't happened. Um, so we still have that challenge ahead of us and we're still definitely need to address it. Um, but, you know, I guess the, the, the good thing is uh, you know, the genomics are available on all the traits, so we can look at uh, uh, the individual traits and find those outliers for production, for uh, type, for fertility. And you're certainly not alone in your thinking. I, I just thinking about the 3K test. Um, I think that's going to be a good tool. When that first uh, was being discussed, uh, some researchers said, well, let's try to make that as accurate uh, as possible for net merit dollars. And uh, a lot of the geneticists around uh, recognized your exact thinking and said, no, let's not focused on one single index or one single description of what makes a good cow or not a good cow. Uh, we really need to have accurate information on a variety of traits and then give that to the breeders and let the breeders decide where we need to take this uh, breed. So that 3K test was actually totally redesigned. And it went from a test that was going to maximize net million dollars the one that would give an equal increase in all of the different all of the different traits. So the improvement in uh, being able to have a more reliable, productive life uh, genomic value uh, is just as important as having a more reliable PTAT genomic value. 
So I think that there probably is maybe a, a more going on in recognizing your thoughts than what you have expressed, but uh, you're right. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's many different components to this genome, genomic topic, and uh, uh, narrowing down to a few bloodlines and having uh, a lot of high genomic animals within those uh, few bloodlines, that's not what we're looking for. But unfortunately, we haven't really found how to uh, find those outliers and uh, utilize them more. And again, you know, you, you do something, you're hopeful, and then you look at the results. So what we're doing is having the 3K available. That's a cheaper test. I think more different types of pedigrees will be uh, genotyped on that more cheaper test. And again, maybe you know, we will find 